Hello everyone, Stepan here. I'll go over a game I played in the 5th Croatian League today, it was round 4 and uh, I had white pieces. I actually spent a couple of days preparing for one opponent which I didn't play against in the end. And the worst thing is that I actually prepared for an opening he doesn't even play, uh, which I must have imagined somehow. But anyway, I played board 3 for our team, uh, I was white, I opened with pawn to e4. My opponent was uh, Zvonimir Shurac, rated just slightly above me. Uh, which I didn't know, and he played the Sicilian c5. And after knight to f3, d6, d4, c takes d4, knight takes d4, he played knight to f6, trying to enter the normal lines, but I played the prince variation of the Sicilian with pawn to f3. And now from this position on, there is actually only one line uh, which is favorable for black, which gives black counterplay, and that's to immediately push the knight away with d5, and after knight to b3, to strike in the center with d5. And the line goes bishop to g7, d4, c3, h6 and after bishop f6 uh, the best is to take with the queen however you can take the with the pawn as well but in most lines uh, white actually goes a pawn up uh, in this variation and this is playable for black it's it's slightly better for white of course in this position after bishop f6 uh, materially it's better to take uh, to take with the uh, with the pawn so but however after queen to f6 black is okay and black has initiative for the pawn after f3 uh, my opponent made a mistake he went for the normal Nidorf setup with pawn to a6 which is actually a waste of time in this position because it justifies uh, white's uh, loss of tempo with f3 and uh, I now immediately played c4, creating a Morozzi bind, and uh, this position is now strategically much better for white, even though white doesn't have a real advantage engine-wise, um, white stands better because he has a lot of play, and of course uh, I'm preventing uh, the d5 push, which is the main idea in the Sicilian. And by the way, uh, as in all of my games, I will first cover the game with my own analysis, and in the end I will just run through a quick uh, engine analysis to see where I went wrong. Here he played e6 which I don't think is the best move, once again e5 would have been better, despite leaving the d5 weakness permanently. I played bishop to e3, and I have a common setup with bishop e3, bishop e2, knight to c3, rook to c1, castling short, and that's it. Those are my next moves, whatever he plays basically, and there isn't uh, too much chance for him to avoid that. So knight to c6, queen to d2, bishop to e7, knight to c3, castles, I play bishop to e2, queen to c7, rook to c1, and now he played rook to d8, and in this position, I have finished my setup, my attacking setup, and I'm able to use one weakness of his last move, and this is another common play, uh, plan in the Prince, uh, Prince Sicilian, and also in the Kramnik variation of the Sicilian, which begins with e6, c4 on, on move 4. So that's, uh, that's much simpler, and it's uh, entered more often. But now I have a tactical move, knight to d5, and this is exploiting the fact that uh, the, the queen is indirectly pinned to my rook, even though there's still two pieces in between. If white captures, then I capture with the c pawn, and the knight is pinned, and it can be taken at my own leisure. He played e takes d5, I played c takes d5, and you can see that the knight is hanging, and that uh, white has major central control in the center, and I know this position, I have analyzed it plenty, time, plenty of times, and I know that white has... Uh, more than plus one in this line and uh, strategically I'm actually almost winning already. He played bishop to d7, the only way to defend the pawn. And here I can either take on c6 immediately or, or play castles. And I started calculating what happens after castles, rook a to c8, d takes c6, b takes c6, bishop a6, this is how far I got. And I know that after rook to a8 uh, I have uh, some problems with my bishops, so I didn't want to enter that. But now that I see the position, I, I see that I can simply play knight takes c6, and whatever he does, I'm winning a piece after bishop to b5, so... This I should have played, however, after uh, bishop to d7, I immediately played d takes c6, uh, which I don't think is as good. I should have uh, kept on the pressure on the position, but I still get uh, uh, three weaknesses in his position, which I slowly build up on. After b takes c6, you can see immediately that white has a much better pawn structure. I have perfectly solid pawns. He has three pawn islands, he has two hanging pawns, and he has one isolated pawn, pawn on, a6, which, on a6, which is already attacked. So, uh, strategically speaking, and uh, when you look at the pawn structure, white is much better. In this position, I castled. He played queen to b7, which I didn't really understand. It's supposed to be attacking my b2 pawn, but it can easily be defended uh, plenty times. I played rook to c3 here, and I actually, this is where I spent about 5 to 10 minutes thinking for the first time after we got out of the opening, and the first move I was looking at was b4, trying to prevent his c5 break, and after c5, b takes c5, d takes c5, and I would play knight to b3, which I think is okay for... Uh, for for white because he would have to def defend the pawn passively and he would have uh, 
much bigger weaknesses than had he had c6 and d6 connected at least. Another move I was looking at after queen to b7 was knight to b3 immediately and after c5 I was going to play rook to c2 solidifying and prepare my uh, knight maneuver. And in this position, after he played uh, queen to b7, I started thinking about what I was going to do in the position. and. Of course, at some point he was going to push c5, so I started to create a plan which would uh, give me a strategic edge. Of course, in, in, the, in the Sicilian you want to have a knight on d5 as opposed to this bishop which is weak. So that's the, that's the ideal setup for white. And I considered the plan, I started thinking about the plan and, and I calculated that I can, that I can manage uh, by moving the knight to b3 then to c1, then to d3, then to f4, then to d5. And inevitably, during those moves, he's going to push c5. So, firstly, I wanted to solidify uh, my pawns and get the possibility of playing rook to b3, so I played rook to c3, uh, leaving off that plan for a bit later, after he pushes c5. And I think that was a good idea, because uh, I, I didn't see how he, how he could really attack me. The only thing I have to prevent is d5. In this position, it, of course, doesn't work. And if I stop d5, I'm okay. And here he played c5. Of course, uh, the second thing I was calculating after queen to b7 was knight to f5 in this position, which would double my pawns but give me a lot of pressure on d6. But I didn't like that he would have a passed pawn on, on the d-file. So after bishop d5, e takes d5. I didn't like my position that much. After rook a to b8, I would play rook to b3, queen to c6, rook takes, rook takes, and I would play rook to c1. But I don't think I have that much here and the pawn is... Uh, the pawn is safe and I don't like the fact that I have an, uh, an isolated f5 pawn, a doubled pawn. So I didn't want to go for this. And I came back to my original plan of playing a knight to b3, knight to c1, knight to d3, knight to f4, knight to d5. So I played knight to b3. In this position I thought I could be slightly worse because I, I'm giving him a lot of play, but uh, he can't push d5. That's the main thing. Of course, if he plays d5, I take a knight takes c5, so I was okay. He played bishop to b5 here, which I think was a mistake, because uh, if he takes my bishop on e2, I take with the queen, and I, I moved my queen away from the critical d-file, which, if it gets opened, I don't have to waste the tempo. So I was happy with this move. I was, of course, never going to take and allow him to take with the a-pawn and pressurize my a2-pawn, so I played rook to d1, solidifying the d5 break. And uh, from this position on, Actually, after bishop to b5, I was calculating one more thing. Yeah, that's what I what I uh, wanted to say. I was calculating knight to a5, and I thought I was winning a piece uh, inevitably, but I actually wasn't. And uh, he has no way uh, to defend uh, comfortably, and he would have to play queen to b6 or queen to c7. And after queen to b6, I was going to play rook to b3. My queen is uh, defending the knight, and I'm pinning the bishop, threatening a4. But I'm not really threatening a4, because he can play rook to d to b8, and after a4, he plays queen to c7, and I lose my knight. Uh, so after a takes, a takes, rook takes, rook takes, bishop takes, queen takes a5. My position uh, has crumbled, I don't have the initiative anymore, and I thought I, I was equal in this position, so I didn't want to go for that. So after bishop to d5, I played rook to d1, and he played a5 here, which... Uh, I wasn't sure about because uh, in his position the, the, the biggest threat I thought was that I could take the bishop and he takes with the a pawn and now if he takes with the queen I'm okay, the queen is misplaced on, on b5, so I was happy with this move and I continued with knight to c1. And this was the critical position after a5, I calculated uh, for a long time whether he can play d5 or not, the angel, the angel will say if I was wrong but I thought he couldn't play d5 and my calculation went, went like this. If he plays d5, I will take the bishop, and after queen takes b5, I would play e5. And now d4, I would play rook to b3, and I thought I, I must have been okay. And now, of course, if d takes c3, I would play queen takes d8, rook takes d8, rook takes d8, bishop takes d8, rook takes b5, and I'm an exchange up. And after, uh, after uh, rook to b3, I was worried about him moving his queen, and I thought he could have had a lot of initiative in that line, but I didn't see the way in which I lose material, so... Uh, okay, let's say he plays queen to c6, and uh, from this position on, I would play bishop to g5, and I'm threatening to, to take the knight. And after c4, uh, attacking my rook, I saw this far, I saw that my, that my rook was trapped, and that I'm losing the exchange at least, but I have some initiative, and I was getting worried about the c-pawn. So, my plan was to take the knight with the bishop, not with the pawn, of course, because after g takes, my bishop and my rook are hanging, so I would play bishop f6, gf6 <coughs> and ef6 attacking the bishop and after bishop f6 i would play rook to a3 but the problem is that he can always return to e7 and 
Uh, this is how far I got. I couldn't calculate further because I couldn't see whether the a pawn was really hanging. So after bishop to e7, I was planning to take rook takes a5, but he has c3 in these lines, and this is where I thought I was completely losing because my rook is hanging. And of course, I can play rook to g5 check and take with the queen, but as I said, I'm losing the exchange, and, and my queen side and my center are, are completely lost because of his pawns. In the worst case, he can play pawn to c2 and then pawn to d3, completely winning. So. This is what I didn't like about d5, but after uh, knight to c1, uh, d5, I couldn't calculate that much, uh, that much in advance. So as far as I got after bishop b5, queen to queen to b5, e5, I thought I stood okay. And after rook to b3, I was I thought he would take on e3, and that would be great. This is the line I calculated in depth. So this is what I saw, and I I saw that I was winning. Of course, he has to waste another tempo, lose another pawn, and this is just busted. But after knight to c1, uh, uh, to my great relief, he didn't play uh, d5, he played a4. And now I thought that I must have been winning, because I can continue with my plan. Uh, first I took uh, the bishop, queen takes b5, I played queen to c2, getting away from the from d5. Knight, now d5 is no longer a threat, because uh, c5 is hanging. He played rook a to c8, which I thought was a mistake and too passive, because now I play knight to d3. And once again, d5 is protected because bishop uh, c5 and he's losing a pawn. And I didn't think he could really do anything. And now me coming to f4 in, is inevitable. And once my knight gets to d5, my position is too dominant and there is nothing he can do. I can even attack the a4 pawn and just grab it with the rook. He played knight to d7 here, which I, I saw that he could go for knight to b6 and threaten knight to c4 in some positions, but... I, I didn't think this was good, and now I get a free hand on the king side. I played knight to f4, he played bishop to f6, and I saw that I could lose this pawn, but I didn't care really, because after rook c to d3, I can at least take on d6. And he did go for knight to b6 here, and, and of course, now if I take uh, if I take the d6 pawn, rook takes, rook takes, uh, rook takes, knight to c4 is completely winning, forking my bishop and rook. And, uh, okay, I will ch show you that line. I think this was completely losing... Uh, in this position, if I try to defend my bishop, uh, then he takes, and he pins my rook to the king, and I thought that black was completely winning here for some reason. Well, he isn't actually, I'm a pawn up still, but my position is too too weak. Yeah, I, I don't like this. So, uh, after after knight to b6, I didn't want to take the pawn, and did, I didn't want to risk that position, I played knight to d5, and now if he takes, I take with the rook, he has a permanent weakness on d6, if he takes on, on b2, I'm happy, I, I don't really care about my b2 pawn, I have too much initiative in the center, he took the knight, I took with the rook, uh, he took here with the queen, uh, in every position I was calculating, I expected him to take with the bishop to, to keep the queens on the board. And after queen takes b2, I'm sure he is losing, because after queen takes, bishop takes, I can play bishop to c5, simply winning a pawn. And and now, of course, uh, he can't take because he ha he's hanging mate uh, on the back rank. So let me just show you that if, uh, let's say, rook takes, rook takes, he can't take because this is checkmate. So after bishop to c5, he can't do anything and he is inevitably losing d6 as well. There is no way to protect that. He played bishop to f6. And of course, now if I take with the rook, uh, I lose a piece or at least pin uh, one of my pieces. So I took with the bishop and now, now I'm just winning. There's... It, it will just take a few more moves to get a completely winning position. He played rook to c2. I solidified with a3. G3, uh, sorry, h6. He is making loops for his king. G3. And now, if any checks occur, I can go uh, to, to g2 with my king. And this isn't worrying me. And I was also looking at this. So I wanted to make room for my king. Uh, rook dc8. e5. Uh, another point of g3 was that if he doesn't make room for his bishop, uh, e5 is winning the bishop because... Uh, e7 is taken uh, if uh, bishop to f uh, if bishop to g5 i simply push f4 so that would be completely winning so he had to make room for the bishop rook dc8 e5 anyway the bishop has only one square and now i'm threatening a lot of discovered stuff and uh, taking the bishop so uh, i first played rook 1 to d2 solidifying bishop to b6 check and now king to g2 now i was very happy rook c1 bishop to b4 now i'm uh, trying to prevent him from entering my position on on c3 which i thought was important to defend f3 rook g1 check this doesn't really do anything i think uh, king to h3 rook f1 f4 this actually helps me it's a tempo up rook f3 king to g4 it's just busted now in this position of course he was threatening to play uh, rook to c4 and to take on on f4 because this pawn is pinned but that's far-fetched so i decided to to chase the rook out with king to g4 
four anyway. Rookie three, uh, once again, a, a pretty passive move, but there's nothing he can do now because after rook to d6, I'm winning a4 and bishop a7, rook a6, uh, bishop to b8. I was calculating rook to a8 here immediately, but I didn't like uh, that after... I don't know what he would have played, but uh, once I play bishop to, to d6, attacking the bishop, he can play uh, rook, to, rook to b3, saving the position. So I first took uh, the a4 pawn, and after king to h7, now I played rook to a8, and now I'm forcibly winning uh, some more material, or at least exchanging the rooks, and there's nothing he can do. After g5, which I didn't think was good, I played bishop to d6, and he could have tried rook to b3 here, but I would just exchange a pair of rooks, play rook to a2, and march my a pawn up the board. But he played bishop to d6, giving up the exchange, and you can see that this is now just busted. I'm attacking the f7 pawn, g takes f4, g takes f4, and here he resigned. There's nothing he can do, of course, he's losing c7, because I can al always play rook to d7. Uh, increasing the pressure and he has no checks at all so the position is busted and uh, after the game I spoke to my opponent he said that he wasn't prepared for f3 that it surprised him and that's actually a great line the prince variation is a great line to play against the Sicilian because uh, a lot of Sicilian players <clears throat> don't know what to do and they enter neither of setups which don't really work let me turn on the engine now uh, okay you can see the the bar on the right side of the board for the for the evaluation this position I know, uh, so yeah, a6 is a mistake, c4 is the best move, e6, uh, you can see that white already has a slight edge, I want to get to knight to d5, here uh, knight to d5 is plus 1, e takes d5, c takes d5, bishop to d7, and yes, castling is the best move, and d takes e6 actually loses all the advantage, but it's still okay, castles, uh, rook to c3 was a mistake, I should have played b4. Yeah, I was calculating that, but I thought root, rook to c3 was okay. c5. Uh, okay, I'm worse now. Okay, uh, the engine doesn't like my plan of knight to b3. I'm not much worse. I, I just lost my advantage. Bishop to b5. Rook to d1. a5 was okay. Surprisingly, knight to c1. Now I'm much worse. Okay, d5 is working. Whoa, oh, okay, I'm losing the position. But this must have been pretty hard to calculate. Okay, let's see. d5. Bishop takes b5 is best. Queen takes b5. Now it says uh, I should play queen to e2. Hmm. I was going to play e5. Let's see how this loses. d4. Rook to b3 is okay. This was all my calculation. But now queen to c6. Ah, okay. But okay, wait. I play bishop to f2. Knight to d5, yeah, he is much better. f4. Knight to e3. Okay, yes, my position is busted. I missed queen to c6. <laughs> Actually, I didn't miss queen to c6, but I didn't see that it was that, that much winning. Bishop to f2. I was going to play after queen to c6, bishop to g5. Why is this losing? He can play c4. Okay. Uh, I was going to play bishop f6 gf6, ef6, bishop f6, this was all my calculation, this is minus 4.3, ah, okay, queen to c2 is a move here, or rook to a3, which I calculated, and now bishop to e7, knight to e2, c3, okay, yes, I'm completely busted, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. okay, so knight to c1 was a mistake, d5 did work, but this was really hard to calculate, Okay, it doesn't matter, but luckily he played a4, so my plan was too slow. I actually should have kept the knight on, on b3 to defend to defend this threat. But anyway, after a4, uh, bishop b5 was good. Queen b5, queen to c2, rook a to c8, knight to d3, knight d7. Yeah, I'm, I'm better now because he allowed knight to f4. Bishop f6 is a mistake, rook this is a mistake. Why is this a mistake? I should have played knight to d5 here, giving giving up the exchange. I can take the exchange back. Ah, okay, this is what I missed. But I lose a pawn. King to f8. Okay, I don't lose a pawn. Yeah, I can take with the b pawn. Ah, this is what I missed. But okay, it doesn't matter. Okay, after bishop to f6, I played rook c to d3, which I thought was okay. Knight to b6, knight to d5. Knight takes d5, rook takes d5, 
and now queen takes yeah queen takes b2 is a mistake if he played bishop to b2 then he is better not better the position is equal but i would have to play bishop f4 attacking d6 i would regain my pawn but he would have a draw probably but after queen takes b2 this is just winning uh, bishop b2 yeah or bishop to c5 and now bishop to f6 is another mistake he could have tried bishop to e5 at least trying to defend but yeah there is no point in watching this this is much better i i'm sure this is better for for white yeah this is losing now okay but i'm i'm surprised that d5 was that strong in this position hmm. so after knight to c1 he could have pushed with d5 and had a completely winning position Okay, uh, still, I, I, it was a very uh, complicated game and uh, I was constantly trying to prevent d5 and he was constantly trying to push d5, so I have to say I'm happy he didn't see this variation, but neither did I and I thought I calculated everything correctly. Anyway, uh, this is it. It was a victory and uh, we played on six boards in, in round four of the Croatian League. We won five and a half, uh, zero and a half, so a team victory as well and that's it. Thanks very much for watching, I hope you got something from this game and remember if you play the Sicilian after f3, after f3 don't play a6, you have to play e5 and force the knight away. Thanks very much for watching, thanks, bye!